So today we're reviewing the Broadway Limited and Scale Chessy Steam Special. This is the Reading T1 Class 2101, and this is a 484. So four leading wheels, eight driving wheels, and four trailing wheels. And this is a diecast metal model, and special thanks to Broadway Limited for actually sending me this to review. It's actually my first BLI model, but yeah, let's get started here in the front. So on top we have the number boards 2101 and this brass bell, which does not move. We've got the headlight and the number plate below, some molded in detailing. Marker lights at the top, and it's random box. I don't know what exactly it's for. You can see the bit on the inside. Then here it says Chessy Steam Special. And below that, there's this white railing, knuckle coupler in the middle, a train line hose to the side, and this pilot has foot plates at the bottom. I also noticed that there's these tiny little bumps at the bottom of the front of the boiler, and apparently that's accurate to the prototype. To the sides, we have these hand railings, which are pretty curvy here in the front. Then you can see at the bottom, there's these hollow steps to go up to the running board. And on top, we have the smokestack and a feed water heater. Then down at the bottom, we have the leading wheels cylinder in the middle check out all that piping and there is a spring inside you can see the smoke box is painted in gray instead of blue for the rest of the boiler while the sides of the running boards are painted with this orange and yellow stripes the paint is pretty shiny and glossy then down here we have the wall shorts valve gear to turn the wheels pretty nice and there's two air reservoir tanks and on top we have a top feed a sand dome and a steam dome it also says SLCA which stands for steam locomotive corporation of America it's also interesting to see that there's this filled in part of each wheel and that's actually acting as counterweights to the coupling rod part. The rims are also painted in white and in between there are brake shoes. You can see some piping going along and there's some molded in detail on the side. Then down here we have the firebox, some piping and the trailing truck which can move from side to side. Then at the end we have the cab, it says 2101, T1 at the bottom, some riveting detail throughout, little hatch at the top and a hole in the window. And if we turn it to the side, you can see some vents at the top and there are white railings. Also it does have interior, we can see molded in diecast metal, it's all painted in black. There's also this platform that goes to the tender, slightly raised up, can't seem to move it down though. And there's a stoker tube connection at the bottom and a little step up here. Alright, let's take a look at the tender. So in the front we got some more molded in detail, white railings on the side. Then we have a three axle truck and the iconic Chessy System logo of a sleeping kitten and the rest of the Chessy System livery. Now if you take a look at the rear, got a taillight in the middle, some small printed text talking about the capacity of water and coal, a ladder on the right hand side, and some white railings at the bottom. Then we got a coupler and some foot plates. And I noticed on the left there's like this little hook thing and I was wondering what it's for, but it turns out it's just a defect. It's actually supposed to be straight. And here's how the locomotive looks like from the other side. It's pretty much the same thing, just this side only has one air reservoir tank. And then here's the front. And now we're gonna take a look at the roof. So from the top down, here you can see the molded in detail. There is a physical hole for the chimney. Lots of different details molded into the boiler. Top of the sand dome, the steam dome, a separately applied dynamo, and brass whistles. Pretty shiny. And then we have this bump in the front of the cab. And the cab roof actually has two hatches. And the tender has a coal load inside, so this texture is actually not too smooth and not too rough. And there's a little wall divider in the back with a ladder on the left and a toolbox on the right. The rest of it is pretty smooth, with the exception of this panel where you probably load the water and there's a hole in the fencing for the ladder. And now let's take a look at the bottom. So in the front, here's how the leading truck moves. And here we got the driving wheels. You can move from side to side. And here is the trailing truck. It has a pretty great range of motion. And then here is the drawbar system. Uh, this leading truck actually has a little wire inside, interesting. Made for the sound, which is probably toggled by this switch. My locomotive is DC silent though, so it probably doesn't do anything for me. You can see the speaker right there. And there is a wire in the back truck as well. So they also sent me some rolling stock. So here is a Pennsylvania Railroad 40 foot Woodstock car, which transports livestock. It comes in this reddish brown color. It's pretty light and it's about as wide as a finger. So in the front, we have the Pennsylvania Railroad car number, some support beams, ladder on the left. It does appear to be separately applied. And we got this knuckle coupler and you can see that trip pin actually sticks out at the top. And there is a train line hose to the side of it. Then we have this simple two axle truck at the bottom. 
stirrup stub in the corner, some riveting detail, some beams, and there's this castle wall shape molded in, the car number, and some information about the capacity. Then we have a door with latches, Pennsylvania Railroad logo, some more car information, and here on the other end, pretty much the same thing, it just has a brake wheel at the top. Now here's a view of the other side and the roof. It's pretty smooth with some dividers and these running boards actually have a wooden texture to it so it's just wooden planks going across. And here's how it looks like at the bottom. It is pretty interesting for the truck they're not using a Phillip head screw it's just flat. And here's this Broadway Limited Imports LLC and there are holes for a speaker if you want to add animal noises and there is air brake detail and some rivets in the spine. <laughs> So the other car in the package just has a different car number. And these cars have pretty wide couplers. And here is the Chicago and Northwestern variant. Painted in the colors, yellow and green, car number on the end. And there's a look at their labeling. On the bottom, there's also small print here. And here's how it looks like on this end and the other side. Other than the paint scheme, they're pretty much the same car. Then we have a Santa Fe 1 ATSF. Again, the difference is just the labeling on the sides. And there's a small SKN at the bottom. And here's a look at the other side. So next up we have the cryogenic tank car. This is from the Big Three Industries. So let's start here in the front. Uh, it's quite interesting that on top there's like this little bump here that sticks out. I don't know, maybe like it's like a buffer. And then it says Big X car number. This railing here, some labeling, hazmat placard. And there is walkway treading texture on top. A detached coupler cut lever and some grab irons in the corners. Then the ends have a stirrup step. This tank car has a lot of these circular ribbing around, which is placed throughout the car for more support. The reporting mark is Big X and has the logo Big Three Industries, a railing gun across the bottom, and in the middle we have this ladder that goes up to this platform, and some boxes on the other side, some car data, and this end also has a bumper. And over here it's pretty much the same thing, just it has a brake wheel. And here's how it looks like on this side. So now let's go check out the top where we have these little bumps. One on that side, two on this side, and the walkways are see-through. There also is this box next to it. And here's the bottom. There we got the truck, pretty simple design. <laughs> a little bump there, uh, the air brakes system and here's the other side. Alright, so this is the ULTX cryogenic tank car. It's quite noticeably different with these shields on top. So here in the front we have this bumper again. This time the placard has a number, 1951. Apparently that is argon refrigerated liquid. And this car is quite unique because it has these shield covers on top. And it looks to be a separately applied piece. It's pretty circular. And there are holes for the little notches. Over here we have some small printed text. And it's actually writing on the shield in French and English saying cryogenic products, liquid argon, some more car data. And here on the other side, we have this weird contraption. It's like a little pipe that goes down to the box. And here's how it looks like on this end. Now, if we compare it to the other cryogenic tank car, it's pretty much the same molding, just the shields and the extra bit at the end. They also sent me this Pennsylvania Railroad P70 coach and a blank undecorated one. This car is painted in Tuscan red and it has gold stripes and lettering. Here's how it looks like on the end. You can see it has rivets molded in, a bit of the interior with the vestibule, and the roof is painted in black, curves up like that. Then down here, we have some sort of pipe detail, these two hoses on the right, and here's how it looks like from the side view. You see a window for the door, painted in grab irons, a stairwell at the bottom, and there's a little vent here on the side on top. And here's how the truck looks like. You can see in the inside a bit of copper in there for electrical pickup. And in the window, you can see a little red wire. This car actually does come with a full interior, so you can see all the red seating inside. And at the bottom, there's an air tank and an ice box. Yeah, apparently in the old days, they used ice in their air conditioner. And here's how it looks like from the other end. It's pretty much the same, just this side has a battery box. Now here's a look at the roof detail. Again, lots of rivets and these little bumps for, I guess, vents. And here's a look at the bottom. Here's the range of motion of the coupler and the bottom is actually very well detailed and here's the ice box it kind of angles on the sides then over here we have the battery box a little plug there i guess for power i honestly don't know and then some more tanks as for the other coach it's pretty much the same thing now let's compare N-Scale to HO-Scale. And they're actually both 484 steam locomotives, but as you can see, the HO-Scale just dwarfs the N-Scale. It's actually around the same height as the driving wheel. And you can see just how miniaturized the valve gear is. Now here's a size comparison of an HO versus N-Scale boxcar. It makes HO look gigantic. N-Scale is roughly half the size of HO. So now we're done unboxing. Now let's go run some trains.
So for my final thoughts, this is my first American N-Scale steam locomotive and rolling stock. It's quite miniature size, but it does have quite a lot of detail, small legible printing, runs pretty well, and it's always cool to see the valve gear in action. The passenger cars also come with lighting and interior, and I had no idea that they used ice for air conditioning back then. The only issue I had was that bent bar in the rear of the locomotive, which I only realized while editing this video, but other than that, it's a pretty nice train. And a huge thanks to Broadway Limited Imports for sponsoring this video and giving me the opportunity to review these models and you can check out their website for more information but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know down in the comments what you guys think and i'll see you guys in the next one bye